Okay, so in this lecture I'm going to be introducing three games as a way of looking at the connection between what I was talking about in the last lecture segment and the world of adventure video games as I define it. I'm going to be looking at Club Penguin and then at Halo and then at RuneScape. Um, so we'll start off with Club Penguin because it's the most basic, I think, and the easiest to grasp. And uh, I'll show you how a penguin walks around, and as we go, I'll be pontificating about how exactly I see what the penguin is doing as being related to the stuff we were talking about in ancient epic with oral formulaic theory and the ideas of recomposition um, as Lord expresses them and as we can see them uh, in the Iliad and the Odyssey. And here we are on uh, the Chinook server of Club Penguin. You can see me directing my penguin, whose name is Amphiraeus, though I suspect you may not be able to read that. Um, and you can first of all see the various different things that people can do with their penguins. There's one here named Parthenon, and I wonder uh, if he has anything to do with the Video Games and Human Values Initiative. But in any event, what you'll see me do is walk around the world of Club Penguin. Now, what I need to uh, get across, first of all, is that the world itself is, in one sense at least, a kind of story in and of itself. That is, it tells the story of how penguins interact uh, in this wonderful snow-covered world um, and how they throw snowballs. Oh, I missed. Never really been able to figure out how to hit this thing. There we go. Okay. Um, there are also individual little stories that you can play. Um, some of them uh, kind of longer and more narrative, as we would think of it, than others. But uh, it'll suffice, I think, um, if we just for now, play um, what I'll be calling a mini game, um, and that is my favorite mini game uh, in Club Penguin, the Jetpack Adventure. So you'll see me going to the beach. Obviously, one way to look at this is me narrating the story of the Penguin Amphiraeus as he goes about his day, and the comparison that I really think works very well is to a bard singing a story about a hero and gradually going from things the hero might do on an everyday basis to adventures the hero might have based on pre-existing themes. Now, one way to look at the pre-existing theme here in Club Penguin is the world itself. Another way is to look at individual pre-existing themes like Jetpack Adventure. So obviously, I'm gathering coins, there's some extra fuel there, and obviously, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't play this the same way twice. Now, you might think of this little narrative here as being rather meager, it just being a scenario of a penguin flying a jetpack, but in fact, the longer you go on with the scenario, the more you realize that there is in fact a story here, a mission that we won't get to the end of right now, but which will eventually take you all the way into a deep, dark cave where you need to accomplish the task of finishing the adventure. Oh, these windmills are bad news. All right, let's see if I can get down here. Now, another thing to say is that I'm playing it more or less the same way, more or less the same way I've played it many times before, but as I said, not exactly the same way which is a really good approximation of the way the bards would have sung their stories. Once they had a good way to sing their story, they would have kept singing it that way in order to entertain their audience as best they could. And then when they found a better way to sing the story, they would incorporate that. But again, the basic idea, which in video games tends to be called interactivity, is the most important thing that, in fact, I have control over the way this story gets told. I have control over my character, 
who really in this game is not so much an avatar as a character. All right, let me bring this to an end by making a mistake. Uh oh. All right. Oh look, ten coins there. Oh no. All right. Uh, uh oh. Okay, I need another pack. I don't know how to get out. All right, and that's the end of my story. And you can tell that there's a narrative here. The penguin landed safely on the ground. So I hope this Club Penguin introduction has also introduced you to the very most basic level of the comparison I'm making. And as I've said before, the comparison will get much more complex as we go along. Next up, the game Halo. Okay, we're loading into the game Halo 2. This is towards the beginning of Halo 2, and what I'm going to show you is a segment uh, in which the main character, controlled by me, famously known as the Master Chief, saves uh, the station, or at least a part of the segment where he saves the space station on which he is currently located. And uh, what I'm going to show you here is the same sort of interactive flexibility you saw with Club Penguin, but with a content, but with a kind of content that isn't there in Club Penguin, and this is the content which is sometimes called the violent content of video games, but what I'm going to try to call attention to here is how closely related it is to the content that we find in the Iliad and the Odyssey, and that you know about from having at least read the summaries that I asked you to read about what the Iliad and the Odyssey are about. Obviously, I am involved in a story whereby our station is being invaded. Check your targets. Watch the crossfire. They're in standard formation. Little bastards up front, big ones in back. Good luck, Iron. Feel the fire on that bulkhead. As soon as that door opens, let them have it. So obviously what you saw was me more or less successfully defending the station, and just as I keep saying, I could have done it in any of a number of ways, and eventually found the most effective way and re-approximated that every time the same way a bard would have with, say, the story of how Achilles and Agamemnon had their argument, or the story of how Athena came to Telemachus and what Telemachus said to his mother. The idea, of course, is that the oral formulaic nature of epic and the interactive nature of adventure video games where stories are made up by the person who is playing the story and composing the story the way that Lord puts it are at least highly analogous. Alright, next up will be RuneScape, the other required game for the course. 